Hi everybody and welcome to Penfinity. My name is Wesley Vanitu and in this quick tip I will show you how to create a procedural RGB noise map. So this kind of map can be used to add more realism to your texture and I will show you that in the next lesson. But for now let's focus on how this map is created. So if, you, if we look inside, uh, as you can see it's really simple. It's just a Voronoi texture and I separate the RGB component to give it uh, specific colors because let me show you the basic one as you can see it, it is made of a wide range of uh, of colors and this one uh, this one can be really really useful and I will show you that in the color paints uh, shaders but for now let's focus on this one so I'm gonna start creating Okay, so before that I'm going to map uh, texture coordinates in it and put it into object because I don't uh, UV unwrap it. And I'm going to put a scale of 500 and leave it to 1 for now. So now I have this. And what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to separate the RGB components. So I have this. And as you can see, the value is still uh, wide, so I'm going to use a color ramp to be able to shrink it only from uh, black to white. And for that, I'm going to put these two slots really close. So I'm going to select the black one and put it to 4.99. And this one's going to be 0.501. So I have the 0.5 between them. So as you can see, I have this, and I'm just going to duplicate this color ramp like this and connect these three ones. So I have right now the red, green, and blue. As you can see, they are not in the same in the same position, and it, it will allows me to use it as a mask to be able to have the, the effect I want. So now let me create a mix RGB and I'm going to create three one and this one is going to be red of course. I'm going to put the bottom one to green and this one to blue. And I'm just going to connect each one of them into the first slot. Uh, let me put that to white. Okay, so the position of the color will will depend of how you're gonna mask them. For me, it gives me the uh, the quickest result with this setup. So, so that's why I use it that way. But of course, you can have the the white here and the green uh, and the red here, and after that, uh, mix them with the different factors. So. Uh, it really depends on how you're going to mix them. For me, it's the quickest results. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the red color ramp here, the green one here, and the blue one here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, this is definitely not the result we have with this one, as you can see. This is definitely not the same. And the reason why uh, is because I'm going to have to do some math operation to be able to to have a, a better mix of the red, uh, green and blue value. So for that, I'm going to create a math node. And I'm going to, let me select the green one, as you can see, uh, I have too much green here, so I'm going to do a divide operation with the red and the green, and I'm going to plug it here. So now the, the green, the green uh, is going to spread uh, much more. Let me plug in the blue for now. Okay, so it starts to, to look interesting, but I'm already having too much, too much blue in it. 
So for that, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to do a subtract operation with the green and the blue here. And I'm going to plug it here. So now it looks uh, really close from, from the results I want. But for me, this RGB noise was uh, still too, too blue. So what I did, I just invert the blue and the green to be able to give me the, the RGB noise I want. So I, I subtract the, the green value and plug it into the, the mix factor here. And now I have my basic RGB, RGB noise. And this is it. This is how I create it. It's, as you can see, it's pretty simple. And uh, don't forget, this is the quickest result I had uh, to create this RGB, but this is not the... Uh, um, you can use different different combination to be able to to uh, to have the the same results for me it was the quickest one so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna create i'm gonna group everything here so let me put it this here and this here like this and I'm gonna group that and let me and what I'm gonna plug here is gonna be only this value but I want to to have the the abilities to be able to influence this noise map because if I want it to to be uh, in certain case, uh, it's going to be useful to have it more more reddish, greenish, or bluish. And for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another mix RGB here, but I'm going to put it into overlay here. And I'm going to put this factor to 1 because here... I'm going to put a value to 0.5 and plug this one. I'm going to plug it here like this. And I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to call it influence. Oh, another thing. me put a value so I can have it as a mix factor if I want or uh, as a mix uh, RGB node. So this influence is going to work as, as you can see I put it in overlay uh, with uh, neutral gray. So in neutral gray nothing is going to uh, 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 is going to happen here. If I for example put more blue here. Oops, I made a mistake. It should have been like this. Okay. So as you can see, if I put a uh, uh, blue, uh, much blue value is gonna have the tendency to go blue. If I put red, it's gonna be red, and green is gonna be green. So it really can be uh, uh, can be useful if you want to influence the the colors and if I put it in neutral gray as you can see it's going to come back to the basic RGB node so this is it this is the uh, how to create a procedural RGB noise map so I hope it was uh, informative and as always if you have any question don't hesitate to contact me on on Instagram um, it's pen underscore affinity and uh, on my email is, is info.penfinity.com. So uh, this is it. And uh, see you soon.